بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈائی ود سم مور ایگزامپل ٹو مور سو دا تھنگ از دیٹ یو ووڈ بی سینگ دیٹ آئی وو آئی ایم ٹیکنگ سائنو سائڈل سگنل فرام دا ویری بگننگ اینڈ آئی ایم جسٹ ٹیکنگ ایکسپونشل آف جی ٹیتا اینڈ پلس ٹو جے مائنس ٹو جے دیٹ سیٹ where how do where do we have to use the analysis equation what have i written this so so to to tackle that problem let us take some example okay so we are asked to find the fourier series coefficients of the question is that the fourier series coefficients ak are unknown for the periodic impulse train for the periodic impulse train and if you don't know impulse train so i would tell you and this let's say I uh, represented with a P of T or an I of T so impulse train so let's say I represented with an I of T so I of T is what this is summation K running from negative infinity to positive infinity delta of T minus K capital T that's it that's it yes yes this is so which means what that this is a function like this if you draw the graph so this is if the t axis this is if your impulse train i of t axis so what do you have you have an impulse located at zero you have an impulse located at plus t 2t 3t and so on similarly at a negative t at a negative 2t at a negative 3t and so on this is what this formula suggests and the summation it is located from negative infinity to positive infinity now let's see we ask the four equations so what do i do i take the the synthesis the analysis equation so my ak would be what would be one upon t right we have to take one period so let me take a period somewhere from here a positive t by 2 to a negative t by 2 this could also be one period right similarly you have over here you have a 3t by 2 you have a 5t by 2 and so on similarly over here you have a negative 3t by 2 negative 5t by 2 so you can take any period one period so one period of my choice is let's say negative t by 2 to a positive t by 2 what do you have x of t x of t is my impulse function that is i of t and and it's multiplied with exponential of negative j k omega not t it's integrated with respect to t this is how i have to do it so now what do i have the impulse value is only located over here at t equal to 0 and the weight of this is 1 the weight of this is 1 right so what do i have is i would write that my ak is equal to 1 upon t negative t by 2 to positive t by 2 i have the value only an impulse which is located at t equal to 0 and this is multiplied with this particular thing and then integrated now you know from the sampling property the area property of the sampling property that under integration if there is an impulse multiplied with another signal what do you have you take the this thing equal to 0 the value of the argument of impulse equal to 0 whatever is the value of t the value of the integration is the value of the other function at that value of t i hope you got the point well you 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 know it you don't need to get it again but let me revise that the value of the integration if it consists an impulse with the product of another signal is what how is it calculated so you take the value of the argument of impulse equal to 0 which means over here let's say that is equal to 0 here right? so you take t equal to 0 so the value of this integral would be the value of this function at this particular value of t which means that the value of this integration would be the value of this exponential of negative j k omega not into 0 so it means that now what do you have that ak ak is equal to what you have this one upon t and the value of this is this particular thing exponential negative jk omega not t at where at t equal to 0 so you put t equal to 0 in this thing you get this one which means that my ak is equal to one upon t my ak is one upon t and you can see from here that this is independent of the value of uh, k and it is just a constant signal like this if this is my k axis this is my ak axis so this is equal to 1 upon t for 0 for 1 for 2 for 3 
4 similarly negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 and so on the values are 1 upon k irrespective of the value of k now I did this for this period where I included uh, that function where I included only this impulse if I include this I take such a the period that I take this impulse so 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 let me say that my a k this I give it a star so that this is another so a k is 1 upon t the integration let's say now I take from t by 2 to a 3 t by 2 so now my uh, x of t would be what it would be consisting an impulse located at positive t so this would now be a t minus capital T right and you multiply it with an exponential of negative j k omega naught t you integrate it with respect to t now what do you have the value of this integration would be the value of the argument is set to zero and the value of the, this function so which means that now if i set t minus tau equal to zero uh, this implies that t would be equal to capital t so the value of this integration would be what the value of this function at t equal to capital t so which means that now my ak would be one upon t into exponential of negative jk omega naught t at t equal to capital t now if you get this capital t over here so you know that uh, this would be one upon t exponential of negative jk omega naught capital t and we know that omega naught into capital t is 2 pi and then you know that exponential of negative j or positive j k 2 pi is 1 jk 2 pi is 1 so which means that again I've got the same thing again I have my ak equal to 1 upon t and that is the answer to this question simple fine now let's say I have a second question so for which I remove the board first okay so let me draw this function first let me draw this function like this if this is my t axis and let's say the the question is that this is y of t or i could also write it as an x of t fine so what do you have you have it at let me take my copy so you have at t1 you have an impulse facing downwards this is at t1 similarly at negative t1 you have it upwards fine then you shift it over here so you have a t minus t1 you have an impulse facing upwards then at t plus t1 you have an impulse facing downwards this is a negative t plus t1 right yes and this is the the period of the or the wave this is if t and this is f minus of t so what do you have after this the signal would repeat so if this is the point now this would be t plus t1 this would be the repetition you know okay now to solve this question that is the 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 given question i've not seen any uh, method you know directly to solve this but we can use the properties again and the properties we use with the with the basic signals with the easiest signals so this question i solve by two methods okay so let's say the first that i solve is with the impulse strain and impulse strain is the function that we have just seen so we solve it with the help of the impulse train this is not an impulse strain method okay this i'm writing because i am using the impulse strain signal to solve my this equation so impulse strain was what let me write let me you know show it over here if this is my t axis and i showed that this was my i of t axis so at zero we had an impulse at t we had an impulse at 2 t we had an impulse and so on similarly at negative t at negative 2 t and so on at this side with a weight equal to one now what do i want to do is i want to shift the impulse i want to shift this impulse strain okay not impulse but the whole impulse strain by a t1 units so let's say the first that i write is i of t plus t1 
so t plus t1 would mean what it would mean a left shift right so if it means a left shift so now if the uh, if this uh, uh, is located at zero so this would be located at a negative t1 now this would be located at a negative t1 is this impulse fine similarly at negative t is the one that is located now it would be located at negative t negative t1 negative t negative t1 similarly negative 2 t would be located now at negative 2 t negative t1 right similarly at the right hand side if you have it at t so now if you shift it towards the left so you have a t minus t1 t minus t1 now this would be 2 t minus t1 then you have a 3 t minus t1 and similarly this going to the left side this goes to the that to the right this to the left right okay now the next thing that i want to do is so this i shifted to the left by a t1 units the next thing that i want to do is to shift the same signal to the right by a t1 units so now let's say this is an impulse t minus t1 so this means now it would be shifted towards the right by a t1 units so the impulse that is located at zero to the right now it would be located at a t1 to the right it would be now located at a t1 right similarly this t would now be located at t plus t1 this t would be located at a t plus t1 then you have 2t so 2t would be located at 2t plus t1 this point right similarly to the left side if you see so the negative t would be located at a negative t plus t1 because this has now shifted toward the right negative 2t would be located at a negative 2t plus t1 similarly negative 3t plus t1 this goes on to the left side that goes on to the right side isn't it like this yes it is so now what do i do is i take the difference of the two equations i take the difference of the two graphs so so what do i write is i write if this is my t axis and if this is my axis in which i say an i of t plus t1 minus i of t minus t1 so what would be the case you have to subtract this from this so nothing in common we would just add the reciprocal of this to this so what do i have is i would have it like this you know the positioning may not be proper but i would just show you now with the green and the red color so if i have it uh, you know just wait a minute yes yes so if this is my uh, t1 so i have a look this is my t1 i could uh, draw it directly downwards t1 this is a t1 because this one now i'm drawing the negative of it then we have a t minus t1 we have upwards t minus t1 i'm just trying to match it with that right then you have a t plus t1 you have downwards yes this is a t plus t1 then you have what uh, you have uh, so we are here you have 2t minus t1 upwards so we're not going there because that is not our period 2t minus t1 the interesting thing that we are interested in is still here till a till a what till a t minus t1 over here somewhere yes because that is repeating then so this is the period capital t fine now similarly at the left hand side what do you have is uh, you have it at a negative t1 and then you have where yes you have a negative t1 so i would draw it over here this is a negative t1 then you have uh, this thing negative t plus t1 negative t plus t1 fine and similarly this repeats negative t negative t1 negative t negative t1 and on this side what do i have negative 2t plus t1 so this would repeat at this side this would repeat at that side so if you have a look if you have a look we have the same function this have a look negative t1 upwards t minus t1 downwards negative t negative t1 upwards t1 downwards negative t negative t1 upwards t plus t1 downward this repeats this repeats this is our original signal so which means that now i have another 
direction to solve my answer and what is that direction what is that direction if my I know I know that this was an impulse that blue color impulse that this impulse function has Fourier coefficients equal to 1 upon t right now if I shift them toward the right toward the left but toward any direction I shift this is x i of t plus t1 this means I have to multiply the Fourier coefficients by a j k omega naught t1 this is what it is isn't it like this similarly similarly if I shift it now towards the right so this I would do what I have an i of t negative t1 the impulse now this would happen when you have to multiply with an exponential of negative j k omega naught t1 this t1 is negative right and 1 upon t so now have a look our original signal which is now the the linear combination of these two signals this implies that my Fourier coefficients will also be the linear combination of these two Fourier coefficients so what do I do is this is my original signal that I named x of t so which means that now x of t has Fourier coefficient equal to what the linear combination of these so 1 upon t I would take common and then you have an exponential of j k omega naught t1 and then a plus exponential of negative j k omega naught t1 and isn't it like this it is so now uh, well we have a negative sign we have a negative sign and why is that because yes I have subtracted them I have subtracted them okay this is subtraction so this would also be subtraction now have a look this could be a sinusoidal function if I multiply and divide it by a 2j so if this is divided by a 2j this is multiplied by a 2j this would imply that my Fourier coefficients x of t is equal to what x of t has Fourier coefficients equal to 2j upon t sine of sine of what k omega naught t1 so this is what I have got so you keep this in your mind for this time because now I am going to do it with another with another way with another uh, basic signal so this impulse train I considered as my basic signal and through that I derived it fine now let me remove the board and do it through another signal basic signal okay now I do it through what through the periodic square wave through the square wave okay let me say the square wave or you can say the gate pulses or whatever it is I usually name it the periodic square wave and how is it represented so we represented it like this uh, you know it okay we have a separate video on this let me name it as, as, as s of t right as s of t so this was represented like this this was represented like this and let me tell you the points okay so this was a negative t1 this was a positive t1 this one fine then you have what t minus t1 t plus t1 t minus t1 t plus t1 similar here this side negative t plus t1 negative t minus t1 and if you want me to draw another so that will be a negative 2t plus t1 and negative 2t negative t1 and this goes on and on in this particular direction and over there you would have 2t minus t1 over here you would have a over here you would have a what 2t minus t1 and 2t plus t1 and this goes on and on in this particular direction as well now what do I have is if you have a look from here I can also de deduce this particular thing and how do I do it how do I do it if I take the derivative of it if I take the derivative so well the graphical derivative I have uh, not uh, you know uh, shown you in this particular course but you you may know it from your basic mathematics and I will try my best I will try that I make a video on this how to take graphical representation graphical uh, what derivative 
for now you know we would we would just do it in this video fine so you take the derivative of your signal s of t what do you have is you take the points of discontinuity the straight line the, the horizontal slope the, this is zero you don't have its slope is zero means its derivative is zero derivative is the slope right you check for the discontinuities at negative t1 you have a discontinuity what do you mean you do is you take the final value minus the initial value so coming from the left it is increasing like this so which means the final value is one the the, the initial value is zero so one minus zero would give you a positive one fine this is at negative t1 at a positive t1 the initial value is one the final value is zero so you have at, at t1 you have a negative one fine similarly at t minus t1 0 to 1 so so you have it like this at t minus t1 then at t plus t1 you have it downwards at 2t minus t1 again from from 0 to 1 then 2t plus t1 and in this fashion this repeats similarly over here negative t plus t1 so it's coming from 1 to 0 so it would be downwards negative t plus t1 similarly it's going from 0 to 1 over here so you have a plus 1 negative t negative t1 and similarly this repeats itself so have a look have a look isn't this the same signal that is given to me in the question so this means that this is equal to my own signal x of t and i need what i need the the, the, the photo coefficient for this wave, right? So what do you know? We know from the previous videos, we have already proved this, that Fourier coefficients a, k for this particular square wave are sine of omega naught k omega naught t1 upon k pi. And let me check. Sine k omega naught. Wait, wait, where is it? Yes, sine k omega naught t1 upon k pi. Yes, these were the Fourier coefficient. So now what have I done is I have taken the derivative of that signal. So you know very well that if you take the derivative of a signal, so which means now uh, the the derivative of x, uh, the derivative of s of t, which is equal to my signal x of t. Now these would have the Fourier coefficients. What the Fourier coefficients previously would be multiplied with the term exponential of j k omega naught this would be multiplied with this particular thing and isn't it like this exponential of jk no no not exponential of jk omega naught. sorry that is not the case it's jk omega naught simply jk omega naught isn't it like this it is now what can you do is the k could cancel out with k right and for omega naught i could write a 2 pi by t so pi would cancel out with pi or let me write it. let me write it j 2 pi upon capital t and then sine of omega naught t1 upon pi so pi would cancel out with pi we have a 2j upon t so which means now that that this particular thing my fourier coefficient for x of t are what they are 2j upon t sine of k omega naught t1 and this is what i already have got previously so that's it you do it by any method you get the same answer you try you try to represent your given signal in terms of any basic signal that you know the derivative of the the Fourier coefficients of like we knew the Fourier coefficients of this uh, square wave we knew the Fourier coefficients of the impulse strain the impulse strain is important you know that if you know that the impulse the Fourier coefficients of impulse strain you know the method you you know it very well that's it so i believe i finished this video over here i am a little tired <laughs> and let me tell you that i also took a long break while i i wrote this question down and then i i went somewhere so i took a long break and this the, the rest portion now i'm recording that i recorded in the morning the first portion now it's the evening time so anyways that's all for today that's all about this video see you in the next video Maybe I, I do the, the differentiation of graphical differentiation integration or maybe that's not important so I will think over it. See you very soon till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.